Now this week our featured artist has been Bunny Siegler and I interviewed Bunny earlier in the week and I'd love to bring that interview to you guys right now. So it's quite long but there's some really great bits. I'm going to do it in several sections with music in between and the tune choices are Bunny's and he's asked me to play these particular tunes at these particular points. So here we go with that interview with Bunny Siegler. The purpose of today really is to interview you in a then and now um, type of, of scenario. So first of all, sort of starting off talking about um, how things were at the very start of your career, um, what got you into uh, the music business in the first place, and um, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that, please. Well, I've been in music all my life. Uh, actually, as far as singing, not as a, a writer I made my first record when I was in school. I was uh, 18, a song called Promise Me. And I did some little recording after a lot of, you know, little com- companies in Philadelphia. But I got my big break when I cut Come On Baby, Let the Good Time Let the good time Roll Feel So Good. Uh, that was on the Cameo Parkway records. Yes. Uh, I was on there. In fact, I was the last. Uh, Act Two, that's a company that had Chubby Chucker, Frankie Avalon, Fabian, and D.D. Sharp, and Chubby Chucker. And I was the last act on that label before they folded. Really? Wow. And, and what's, what a sort of time would that be? About 19, 1967, wasn't it? Let, let the good times roll? Correct. Yeah, yeah, I, I had your discography up here. It was, ni- yeah, 1967. Wow. There we go. And what's what's so funny about it, I was in California, and uh, at those times when records played on the East Coast, it took like a couple months before they started playing in California. Right. You know, it, yeah. it had to be a hit. And I remember being on people who called me and said, you have a hit back here, you have a hit. I said, well, I don't hear anything. Thing. I'm here, and I was on the beach at Malibu, and at those times, like in those old pictures, people had the little transistor radios. Yes, yeah. So I heard the record playing, and I ran around the beach making, because everybody had on the same station. I said, turn your radio up, turn your radio up, I'm on. So I had to get at least 10 people to turn their radio up so I could hear it good. <laughs> and I was... I thought I was crazy. I was running around, didn't know I was singing. I didn't know I was, because it was brand new. I just started playing. Well, and this was on the beach in Malibu you did this. So I, I bet you got some funny yeah. looks. <laughs> I bet you got some very funny looks for that. But um, did you sing along with it on the beach while, while you were there? No, I was singing. That's how they knew I was telling the truth. I was singing. Because ah, they, yeah. they had never heard it, especially on the field so good. Now, now I was doing steps and dancing in the sand. I would have liked to have a picture. They probably thought I was crazy in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then they started clapping and, uh, and having fun singing with me. Marvellous, marvellous. So did it break out into a nice long party then, uh, Bunny, after that? Or uh, on the beach? That well, sounds great. <laughs> I, was with, I was with my lady love. We just, uh, I, I forgot what I did. I had to get prepared to come back east. They needed me back east to start doing some shows. Because right. I had drove my car out there. I was going to stay out there. And I had to fly back immediately and ship my car back.
I traveled all over England with the tramps. With the tramps. Yeah, we were we were we did forty one night at uh at a at a place called Brannigan's. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I never I never was called to do a tour. I would love to do a tour in in England. I talk everywhere I go. They know me in England. I meet people from England. Well, but the promoters, I, I have never did a like a, a major tour there well, with other I mean, artists. Uh, the DJs uh, here know, know you very well for your salsa days. Your salsa disco tunes of were sort of round about the 1977 era, 1978, 1979. Those sorts of disco type tunes are very very popular here amongst the disco and soul scene and and the and the clubs at, at the time. So um, you know that that is very popular and, and most of the DJs, especially on Ram Jam Radio, n- sort of know your tunes from then. Well, I'll tell you what, the the Let the Good Time Roll has stood the test of time. They still play that all over the country. So yes, um, that would that would be the first one, and I had the, your playlist here. We were asked to play um, uh, Good Times Roll, and then uh, Girl, Don't Make Me Wait Too Long. That was the next one yeah. that we'd been requested to play. You know what? That that song was bigger in Philadelphia than Let the Good Time Roll. Really? That, girl, sold, sold more, and, sold more, and, yep. In fact, the little girl did the part in that record where I say sugar. Yeah, and the little girls used to stop me on the street and say, "Just say sugar for me." <laughs> it's, it's in your voice there, um, uh, Bunny. That's what well, it is. Well, I I usually do what little girls tell me to do. <laughs> Thank. You. What's that, What's that song? Thank heaven for little girls, <laughs> and thank heaven for big girls too. More so. What did you say? Could you say shiver uh, as as you were to the to the girls? The, the girls were asking you to say it. I wondered oh, if you would I say said, it. I said I said sugar a hundred times. Sugar, <laughs> sugar. <laughs> there you go. And the girls yeah. love that one. Oh, I love the girls too. Uh, well, but the lady. <laughs> That's always a good thing. So, so with the um, girl, don't don't make me wait too long. What's sort of your your favorite thing about that song what, what what do you think makes that song sound out for for you particularly well you know it was uh i did it in two takes right when uh it's 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 amazing when you have nothing to think about they gave me the song and i i rehearsed it and rode around the car and listened to it listened to it at home yeah. and when i went in the studio i went in and i started singing it and then it stopped and then I sang it again, and they said, that's it. Wow. You know. And it was done in just two takes, literally two takes. Two, two takes. Wow. I mean, that, that's pretty impressive. I mean, some tunes, two, three hundred takes maybe, but two takes. I mean, were, uh, back in, the, in those days, were, were things done in a lot less takes? Did you just tend to just go in and keep going in the studio? or? Well, well I was in there with professional people. Yes. You know, uh, a lot of people have you do it over because, you know, they they don't know. But uh, but the, these people knew when we had it. Yes. In fact, there was uh, Leon Huff, John Madeira, and there was a, a gentleman who just died, uh, John Levy. I was my manager at that time. Yes, yeah. He was in the studio. We was in, uh, in New York. And... Uh, you know, back in those days, I didn't know what happened in the back. I was out there singing. I didn't know about the technology, whether they had four tracks or two tracks. Yeah. You know, way way back in the day, they only had two tracks, and you had to sing it all the way through, the horns and everything at one time. Wow. But I'm not I'm not sure of the equipment we had, but no. I sang it all the way through. Wow. And and, done, and did the whole tune in two takes. I think that's pretty impressive. I think that's very impressive indeed.
We go to first part there of the Bunny Siegler interview and um, finishing with Girl Don't Make Me Wait Too Long, the tune that he particularly chose. Now, a quarter past eight today, we're going to do the slice of reggae, so that'll be 15 minutes early, and then we go back into the interview with Bunny at half past eight and uh, take you through probably uh, until sort of 10 to 8, maybe a little bit later with that particular interview. Close <laughs> You're listening to Ram Jam Radio with DJ Gloss. Ram Jam, it's 8.34 now on Ram Jam Breakfast. We're going to go back to the interview with legend Bunny Siegler. <laughs> hey, this is Bunny Siegler. And when I'm in England, I'm jamming with DJ Gloss on Ram Jam Radio. Boom, tick, doom, dong, 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 dang, dang. What, what was it like working for record labels like well, one that stands out for me really is Cell Soul. I mean, um, they're, they're just such a, a massive dance label as far as we're concerned here in the UK. I mean, what, what was it like sort of working under their, under their banner, so to speak? Well, Cell Soul was, uh, they had a guy called Ken Carey who was the youngest of three, Barry, three brothers. Yes, that's right. Stanley... Stanley, Stanley, Joe, and Ken Carey. Ken was the youngest. And uh, Kenny was really um, a different person. He was he owned the company, but he was a friend to you, too. Yes. You know, like, uh, like a, lot of, a lot of people, you know, when they had the company, then when a lot of people fell on hard times, he did something that no other company do. He helped you out. Other mm-hmm. companies, you want, you're on your own. Just but he had a, yeah. he had a feeling he had a feeling for people, and we are you know even though they're not in the business today, we are still friends and we still talk. Yeah. And in fact, uh, when Lolita Holloway, if you know you know Lolita Holloway, I certainly do. Yes, I played one of her tunes this morning actually. Yeah, well, I, I sang at her funeral in Chicago. Wow. This, this guy, the guy who owned the company, even though they're not in business anymore, when she passed away. He took me and Earl Young from the Tramps, and we went to Chicago, and uh, uh, they had her funeral at Jesse Jackson's church, where he did the Rainbow Co- Coalition. Yes, yeah. And I, I, I sang for her. I sang for her. Sang the Lord's Prayer. Oh, that's lovely. That that, that must have been uh, must have been a very touching moment for you, sir, to 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 do that. Oh. It, and you know they had us all on stage. Kenny was on there, and he got up there, and he spoke about her. Yes. And here's a guy that owns the company. Come over to Chicago and gets up on stage and speaks about the love he had for the artists and stuff. I mean, it, it made you want to sing, you know. It, it certainly does. Yeah. Uh, what what a very very touching moment. But I, I noticed that um, you did the. Um, it says on your discography about doing the 23rd Psalm at the Congressional Gold Medal awarding to is it the Tuskegee Airmen um, on March the 29th. That was 2007. That was a, another quite touching moment, I would imagine, for you, sir. Probably not on the same uh, scale, but it, in a very similar way. Well, it was in the White House. It was at the Capitol building, and uh, Colin Powell was looking right down my throat. Wow. <laughs> and, and I was back in the corner... So the guy told me President Bush was leaning almost down to the ground trying to see who was singing back in that corner. Yes. And man, uh, when they got when I was there was there was about 300 Tuskegee Airmen there, and at least 80 percent of them walked in. You know. Wow. And when and before I started singing the 23rd Psalm, I started singing straighten up and fly away. Cool down, Papa, don't you blow your mind. That's the theme song they had wow. back in the day. That sounds really good. I love the way you sounded then, even on the telephone. sounded wonderful. Um, I'm just um, looking also, uh, you had the, you did the national anthem for a boxing match. Was it Kelly, Kelly Pavlik and um, Bernard Hopkins? You, you sung the oh, yeah. Anthem. <laughs> so uh, that, that was that, that was for HBO. Yeah, and, and it was it was it was uh, at the uh, the Coliseum in Atlantic City, 
And were you, were and, you were standing and man, there? And there's a lot, I had a lot of people there. In fact, I've done it twi- twice here at the Coliseum. Wow. And at uh, different fights. And I do it for the, the best basketball teams. That, uh, and uh, when they had 9-11, I sang at a place. One of the promoters in Philadelphia, his brother was in the 9-11, so I sang God Bless Good. America. I'm the kind of guy, I'll sing whatever, you know. That, when nice. I was in when I was in uh, Texas, I was singing. What was that? I was I was yeah, singing back in the saddle again. <laughs> and I was in, I was in Israel. I was singing having the ghetto like Elvis Presley. And I was doing the Elvis Presley stuff. <laughs> Sounds brilliant. I'll do anything. I'll do anything to keep working. Yeah, <laughs> I I saw you on stage uh, um, uh, on a. In fact, I found the video on YouTube with Instant Funk, and you were singing a different version of "I Got My Mind Made Up," uh, and you were on on stage live uh, in this YouTube video. It was very different to the Cell Soul original that I remember with Instant Funk, but. Uh, I actually played that yesterday uh, as my first tune for you because I, I really loved the the arrangement. It was really, really good. Well, what happened was we were messing around with it before we put the verse to it, and the and the uh, the guitar player Kim Miller he said, "Man, I keep singing that hook. I got my mind made up, you know." And then we, uh, uh, I started uh, just hearing the hook. And the girl who did uh, the the rap for us, I hadn't seen her in about twelve years. And, and uh, she's from Trenton too. She's from Trenton. Right. Yeah. And uh, and the show it was a it was a little club in Philadelphia. It kind of reminded me of some of the well, England the places are bigger. Yes. But it's a little club called Puck. And it, it was. It was nice to be close to the people because when I come down off the stage, the people are right close, and you can look in their eyes and stuff. And and I find out as an entertainer, uh, I I do a gospel. They got a thing called TBN Trinity Broadcast, and I don't know where they go. It it goes all over the world, so I know it probably goes to England. Yeah. And I I uh, I did a song. I did one song, and the second song, I, I almost messed up. I said the wrong words, but I cleaned it up. Yeah. But then I, I learned, and what I did, I sang the song. I got over, but I didn't look at the people. And I, I and I, and I, then I realized I did the next one, and I was looking at the people want that eye contact to know that you're talking to them. Yes. Uh-huh. You know, and all these years I've been singing, I learned that lesson. And I tell you one thing. If it wasn't for England, a lot of artists would be forgotten. Well, we we do yeah. we do very much support soul music here in the UK uh, and, and also reggae too. There's a, a massive following for soul going right back to sort of the more the, the 60s Northern Soul type days, right the way up to what we now call neo soul, which is the the sort of new wave, the new wave of soul that is listened to and produced uh, not just here in the UK but obviously across the states as well. So you know, stations like Ram Jam Radio are mobile stations. They're uh, providing music of black origin to a very, shall we say, receptive uh, population here in the UK. So you know, we we do we love our soul music, sir. We, we very much do. But but England. They know so. They know. Uh, in fact, I have a a song. You know, uh, you, you I mean, I'm artists in America. You can be here. You can be. Uh, you can be forgotten or almost forgotten. And then you come to England and you say, "Wow, I'm still. I'm still here. I'm still loved." You know. I mean, they give you such love. You hate to come back home. Mm. Well, you know. Uh, you, you know they uh, they they love a song. I have a song on my album that I don't know whether it ever played here, but when I came there, it was like uh, I, I think I was in Blackpool. The song "Sunny Sunday." Yes. And you know I recorded that song. I didn't write it, and, and I never listened to the words. 
and tell them they had me to sing it over there and I had to study the words. And, and you know, Sunday, Sunday is like when this person had a chance to just relax. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was when they worked hard. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But when Sunday came, it was like going on holiday. <laughs> well, and that was in Blackpool, you say, funny. Blackpool, I was, uh, they had a show one time. Yeah. And uh, I think Archie Bell was supposed to come, but he couldn't leave the country. Archie, and then Archie there was Bellamy one, was, yeah. yeah, and then there was one with Billy Paul and Dexter Wanzel and Gene Carn. I was over for that. I was supposed to go on tour with them, but I had booked the a uh, uh, cruise before the show, so I came over and did one concert, and then I went back to America to go. I had a cruise down through the Panama Canal. Sounds great! What, what a wonderful lineup. But, Fun, funnily enough, uh, buddy, I, I had the idea for this particular show while I was at a Soul Weekend in Blackpool in January this year. So, um, so there you go. There's a little bit of uh, crossover for us there. Um, excellent. Blackpool is still quite a centre of uh, soul music um, in in the UK. Um, and there is a, an annual weekender held there, which is probably the best attended soul weekender in the country. So, well, I couldn't believe I couldn't believe all the people that were there, in the in the mix of people, and they came to you know to be entertained. And it was uh, I tell you a funny thing. Uh, one of my songs I didn't I didn't have on the thing because they said well. And the, we didn't rehearse with the band. We come over there. We we have songs that they say you got to do this and do that. Somebody says, "Sing this song." We used to love me tomorrow. Yes. So I'm um, I'm used to singing like I sing for you now. I, I sing. I ah, today you mine completely. I get the love. I sang it a cappella. Yes, yes. And when it got to the part tonight with words unspoken. All of the people in this start singing it, and I was almost in tears. It sounded so beautiful. Oh, wonderful! And then, and then as it got when the night meets the morning sun, then the band came in, and you know it wasn't on the, it. It just it just went over. Well, it sounds absolutely brilliant, and um, and typical of of the atmosphere that we we get here. You know, where, where nobody even minds if the lights are on, everybody dances, the dance floors are always packed. It's, uh, it's a very, um, it's, a, it's a lovely environment to be in. And um, it, uh, I, I'm glad that, that we, we had that Blackpool thing uh, in common because I can picture where you were and you can picture it too. So that, that's really good and, and I love that. There we go. Um, we're going to play that different version of I Got My Mind Made Up, which is a live version right now, and then we're going to go back into the interview after this. Lord, have mercy. Up we go. You giving it up? Yeah, go
There you go, Bunny Seagull live with Instant Funk. We were just discussing that um, that version came out of a bit of jamming uh, that they were doing prior to going on stage for that particular set. Back to the interview now. Bringing things a little more up to date, Bunny, um, your current um, request with me was a tune called I Got Moves, which is uh, one that's uh, that's current. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that one? Uh, that's one that I love because it's, it's uh, it was like a funny thing. Like I got moves, which I dance. I got moves like James Brown. Like I got moves like like Michael Jackson, and I got moves like Usher. Yeah, that sounds and, good. Um, it's uh, it's just a dance tune to have fun. There you go, that's the uh, latest single from Bunny Siegler there. That uh, is released this year. It's I Got Moves. And we're going to go into the last part of the interview with Bunny, which will take us a little bit late into the break at the top of the hour and the nine o'clock mix. But uh, I want to get this in so that everybody can hear it because uh, I love talking to Bunny. He was so much fun. And, uh, you know, there, there was way over 40 minutes of, of footage and, and it's unfortunate that I have had to cut some of it out but uh, to fit it all in but uh, here we go with the last part so what are, what are your plans for the future now uh, Mr Sigler what, uh, what, what is in the well, pipeline 
I don't know whether you saw on the internet, March 14th, I leave for Paris. I'm going over to perform Othello. Othello. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah the, I'll be the at an opera play. house on, on the, I'll be at an opera house. I can't, I don't know the city. It's below, uh, one is, be, is below Paris. It's, it's on the 19th I'll be performing. Lovely. And then on the 21st, 20, 20, 22nd, I'll be in Paris doing at another opera house. Lovely. And the 23rd, there's another opera house outside of Paris. I don't know the names right now, but I'll be singing. I'll be singing is Ruchate Urgani Armusa Manasipatua. But then I'll be doing the funky Nutra da Tena Gloria. So I'll do a little operatic, and then I'll put a little, I said, put some funk in it, and then I'll love to put a little funk in it. Ain't no problem. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> that came across really, really well. So is that Othello on each occasion that you're doing that? I've been doing that since '04. I did it in Venice, Trieste, Reggio Mia, Rome, um, and, um, let's see what the other place, Stanford College. Wow. And that's the only place we did it in America, and I did it in Dusseldorf in, in Germany and Vienna, Austria. You see, I like many of my listeners didn't know that you did that, so we've learned something about you today, Bunny. We've, we've learned that you do Othello as well as all these lovely dance tunes that we've known you for, well, since the 1960s. How fantastic is that? Well, you know what? I've been asking the promoter, you know, if they go to all these countries, I say, look, you got to go to England because people know me in England. And, you know, the way we do the show, if they come see it, I'm doing opera, but I'm doing funk, too. Yes. There's a there's a clip on uh, YouTube. If you put in Otello, Bunny Sigma, you see me singing funk and a little bit of swing. Lovely. And a little bit. I, I, think, I think it would really go over there because it's, it's music. It's not a lot of you know, uh, highbrow stuff. And what happened is uh, they got a song where I be doing all this opera group. And at the end of it, I go, Ooh, Lord, now, oh, yeah, now. And it, the, the look at me. I mean, I've done this thing like, like, like Caruso. And then I break down like the whinings. Well, that's brilliant. And, and, and it's coming over so well on, on the telephone, Bunny. It's, it's so lovely to speak to you, you know. Um, and uh, it, for you to give us your time and, and have these conversations with us has been absolutely awesome. And Ram Jam Radio thanks you so much for that. Okay. Uh, I wondered if I could ask you if you would do uh, a little Ram Jam Radio jingle for me, something along the lines of, Hi, I'm Bunny Siegler, and I listen to Ram Jam Radio with DJ Gloss, or something like that. Yeah, oh, it's like a, like a promo. Yes. Okay. I'm jamming with Ram Jam Radio with DJ Gloss. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> hey! This is Bunny Sigler, and when I'm in England or or in the, wherever, I'm jamming with DJ Glass on Ram Jam Radio. Perfect. Thank you so very much, Bunny. That is absolutely wonderful what you've done for us. And um, would would you like to tell the Ram Jammers any anything else about what what you're currently up to, uh, what your plans are for this this year beyond Paris? Well, at the Paris, I'm going to be working on this. Uh, I got moves and in instant funk. We call ourselves the Family Soul now, and I have a girl that's working with us. You know, so I'm really, I'm really going to start performing. I really. Uh, well, I've been doing it, but I mean, uh, sometimes you gotta say, "Well, I'm gonna step up the this, this stuff." And uh, I, this stuff I recorded was uh, uh, it was because I started. You know, I got a studio, and sometimes when you have a studio, you should work all the time. 
so I'm back to writing constantly now. Excellent. And in, in fact, the song I got moves that wrote there with a gentleman, a young guy. He's from uh, Haiti, but he lives in America. Yeah. And um, we really write great songs together. We got one that we're working on, red and yellow, black and white. You know, I I, I love them all because they're in my sight. You know, just uh, yes. great song. But one thing I like to tell the people of England, if it wasn't for the people of England. A lot of uh, the artists in America would be forgotten, you know, especially the ones that had one hit. Uh, uh, you know, when you come to England, you, you, when you come home, you, you figure you've been to heaven. Because oh, so you're, treated, you're treated royally. And, you know, and unless you got a, a major new record, although they have some, I did an oldie show uh, with Charlie Gracie, and the Dovells yep. uh, this past weekend. There's some places that people, uh, they still have it here, but I mean it's not compared to, to England. That's brilliant. That's, that's very nice. You will always be royalty here, sir, always. Well, everybody I know that's went there, they come back with a different look on their face, like they've been to Shangri-La. <laughs> that's a lovely way to put it. <laughs> A lovely way to put it. Well, um, thank you ever so much, uh, Bunny Siegler. It's been such an honour to interview you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. And um, please stay in touch with Ram Jam Radio. And um, you know, if you're here in the UK, hopefully uh, your promoter Casey will will let us know, and um, we can perhaps. Um, you know, meet up wherever you are and, and, and do uh, an interview with some video at some point. Okay, no problem. That would be uh, wonderful. Ch- check, me, check me out, and remember, I got moves, and I got my mind made up. <laughs> we've seen your moves, and we we know you, you've got right. your mind made up, sir. Brilliant. Thank and you tell all, And tell all the little, tell, tell the, the people over there, always let the good time roll because it feels so good. <laughs> thank you very much Bunny it has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today and uh, you have a wonderful day sir and um, okay. thank you so much for your time we're, we're honoured uh, Ram Jam Radio well, it's, eight, it's, it's 8 o'clock in the morning it's 8 o'clock in the morning here so I'm going back to bed are oh, you going back <laughs> to bed well you, you have a good yeah. sleep sir I, I, didn't get, I, didn't get, I didn't get to bed too late so I was I was thinking about our conversation and I couldn't go to sleep. <laughs> well, our conversation's um, completed for now, sir, but we would love to speak to you again um, you know, later on, maybe in the year when you're doing uh, something else and, and you know, uh, sort of bring a return interview to Ram Jam Radio. That would be lovely. We don't obviously want to pester you too much, sir, but we're very thankful for what you've done. So you have a lovely day. Okay. Thank you very much, Bye-bye. Bunny Seeker. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey! This is Bunny Sigler. And when I'm in England, I'm jamming with DJ Gloss on Ram Jam Radio. Boom, tick, doom, dong, 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 dang, dang.